Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital Recap for May 10th through 14th. I was kind of bored this week. I don't know. Yeah, there was like sporadic things that were like, oh, that was nice. And then they just go into wah, 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 wah. Yeah. And you're like, move along. Exactly. I'm sitting there. I'm like, do I have to pay attention right now? Yeah. But the reason to go back to last week, the reason that Jason and Britt knew to move was because Spinelli called from, or Dante called from Sam's phone. Yes. So that made sense. That did make sense. That did make sense. Are you going to go right into that? Sure. Do we want to? Sure. Um, I was disappointed with Dante. I mean, I like that whole shower scene of getting ready to go out. That was good. But I was disappointed with his detective skills. Like, really? He didn't pay attention to Sam. I feel like he knows she's shady. And I that felt she was like up he was something. only, he was being the only person actually being a detective. I guess following the leads to get there, sure. But I feel like he knows Sam well enough to know that she was not just going to stand there and politely wait for him. Although, you know what? I did write down, I don't know, Dante, why would a pregnant woman call her OB multiple times when she's pregnant with her first child? Good detective work. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, he was a little bit, but he's also a little rusty. Sure. I know, I know. Sure, he's a little rusty. No. No, I just... I'm going to miss that hair, though. I'm sorry. He, that was nice. I liked that they threw that shower scene in there. It was totally unnecessary, but I was happy that they did it. I was confused by it. I'm like, did I miss something? Right, because you thought it was going to be a love scene at first. At first, yeah. yeah. I agree. And mm-hmm. then when I noticed it was one person, I was like, is Chase out of the hospital? Like, what happened here? Or is Chase dreaming or something? Like, I was just right. going to Chase. Don't know why I wasn't thinking it could be Dante, but... I didn't think of that it was him at first either. I was waiting for a love scene, but yeah, I was happy with the end result either way. But I'm just, Carly said what was on all of our minds. No, Sam, you said you wanted out of this life. Exactly. I'm not going to tell you what's going on. Right. And she said, it's not even about not trusting you. It's that you shouldn't have this information because that pulls you right back in. Exactly. I'm not being mean. I'm doing what you told me to do for you. Exactly. And she made a big, Mm -hmm. I can't live this way anymore. Okay. Then don't live this way. Right. You know, trust. I do understand because Sunny's not there that there is probably, but she knows that Carly would fight to the death. And Jason was the person that kept everything in order. So even though he's injured, I could see if he was the one that was gone and it was Sonny being concerned for Sonny. But with the roles swapped this way, no, Jason's going to take care of his stuff. He always does. Right. Exactly. So it was nice of her to take the passports. It was cute to see that like back and forth of her trying to get rid of Brit and him being like, no, no, go back where you're supposed to be. But at the end, she just went over and said, you're taller than me, but in a pinch, you'll pass and left it at that. It was just like, you know what? I'm not going to win. Right. I'm, I was kind of impressed that she put two and two together. Like, oh, they're probably at the stables. Yeah. But whatever. She was, she was good. I was happy. I liked that storyline this week. I there had no go. idea that there were 10, there was a 10 hour role for fugitives. No, but now I'm like t- saying that role like I know it or whatever. Cause yeah. I was watching with someone else that doesn't watch and, uh, they said something about why were they moving? And I was like, cause you can only stay in the safe house for 10 hours. Like I knew that or something. Right. <laughs> well, now we do. Now we do. So therefore we can. It's educational programming right here. Exactly. We'll be able to get away with a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. We probably shouldn't announce it on our podcast though. <laughs> This is not proof. <laughs> Will this hold up? Publicly broadcasting <laughs> our evil plans, <laughs> as we have seen on General Hospital many a times, does not mean we're going to be guilty. Well, Sunny taught us to wear gloves this week. Oh, so as long as we remember that, we're good. Okay, we're not getting into that right now. We <laughs> can get back to that. Do we want to stick with Jason and Britt, or do we want to go there? Do whatever you want to do. Where's your mind taking you? Well, today? you just took us to Sunny, so just do it. Because it's the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm watching it like, no, this does no. I was okay with having them be a, a nice guy. Now he's going to be a criminal. No. But he's not a criminal. I mean, he's, he was just breaking it. He was I mean, it's a bunch of crime. But he was doing it for the right reason. He's trying to solve the mystery. And he took the money that Elijah had already taken, taken from, from the, the yes. piano. He yes. was not pocketing it for himself. Yes. So it's kind of like a Robin Hood but thing But I just here. thought the whole thing was... It was dumb. It was dumb. I'm glad he's finally picking up that Nina knows him a little too well, though. Mm-hmm. He took it as like a romantic gesture, but at least he's paying attention and being intuitive to that because, yeah, yeah she knows way too much about you. I wonder why. I felt like her with Elijah could have been better. Yes. 
her, not her acting as an actress, but her acting as Nina. Yes. She is capable of being manipulative way better than that. She is not a stupid woman that is, they're making her flighty. Yes. And, and like, she's always been flirty flighty, but she's smart. Yes. And she would follow through. Whenever he leaned in for that kiss, she would have done she it. She would have kissed him. Yep. Like, if he would have been trying to hook up with her, sure, you're not going to do that for the case. Right. But one kiss in a park, like, okay. Yeah. And his business is getting robbed and his security team called him and she's like, no, 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 no. Right. I'm going to go with you. No, you're not. This so is our first date. Why would you come? Right. The police are already You wouldn't there. even let me kiss you. Why do you want to come? Exactly. To, like, yes. Not saying that really one really has to do with the other, but she was basically not showing that kind of interest in him. But then. And the way that she was asking questions was way too blatant. Yes. I don't know yes. anything about your job. Why don't you give me the intimate Every details single of detail. everything? Give me your bank account numbers. I just want to check it out. Right. I don't know. She just wouldn't talk like that. She would be flirty and cute and. Oh, I'm so she interested to tell him more. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So exactly. A hundred percent. Not the actress, but the way the actress was they, told to play that I was going to say, I'm like, the way that they're writing the character right now is, it's like they take turns. Is there a rule that they have to take turns writing badly for a character? Maybe. Like someone has to be written poorly at a time? I take it as dumbing the strong women down for a while, which I don't like. Nope. Because that seems to me like what they're doing with every strong woman. They dumbed Laura down for a while. Now she's back to being the mayor. Carly's never been dumbed down. Mm -hmm. No, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. She was dumbed down a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Anna was dumbed down recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we Guys. can't let them be too strong. One of the best things about General Hospital is that they have always, always, always had strong women. Mm -hmm. Let's not change that. No. And you can be a strong woman and be in love and be... Strong still. You can be wishy-washy right. over your partner because you have feelings for them. That doesn't mean that you're going to be wishy-washy in your job or right. well, like whatever. Well, like this week with Willow bringing in her books. I was like, you know what? Why don't they have her be single? I know that we don't agree with who she should be with. But you know what? She got out of a cult, had to grieve the loss of her baby to find out that she thought that he was alive. Mm -hmm. it, she, I mean, she went through all of that. You know what? Right now, she could be still mom to Wiley. Mm -hmm. But if she wants to change her career, she should seriously just be focusing on being a nurse and not worrying about her love life. I do agree. Like, that's... I think the only saving grace to that is that Michael is so supportive. Right. They're going to play up that part of the relationship. But so is Chase. Yeah. Either one of them would have been okay. Right. We can agree but to disagree. No, who no, she but, should do not, it. but that's what I'm saying. Yes. It's not like Chase was like, no, don't go pursue your dream. Right. He'd have been like, sure, go ahead. That's awesome. You mm -hmm. know, but she needs to find who she is. We've said it a hundred times. Outside not of all that. every woman needs a man all the time. Nope. Just like not every woman needs to get pregnant accidentally. Oh. My gosh. Okay. I am curious though. Could Sophia Matson be pregnant? Maybe. Maybe. Because there was, this is just my mind speculating that I might have seen. I'm not saying that she is, but just the way they had her dress too. Or else they're just doing a really good job of having her dress as a woman sick with morning sickness, which is the worst named sickness ever because it's all day. It's all day. Mine was by 3 p.m. If I did not get sick by 3 p.m., I was not getting sick. Huh. Really weird. That is funny. Because I typically started work at four. And so I really think it was before. I don't know. Really weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you all day? I was only in the morning with Matt. And then whenever it felt like hitting with the girls and with Madeline, it was like the entire pregnancy. They had mm -hmm. put me on whatever that med is that they were giving Sasha now. I can't remember what it's called, but the one for nauseousness. Yeah. So hmm. don't know. Interesting. I didn't feel like that was a weird conversation for Sasha to have in the bathroom. Though. No, not at all. So it was annoying that Gladys overheard. I know. But it's not one of those things that I could say, why was she saying that in the bathroom? You're calling your doctor for a normal man. Right. You just threw deal. up a little. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. so I was okay with that. Good job on that one. That was realistic. But for everyone to think that it's Cyrus's. Oh my gosh. So again, I was watching with a friend that does not normally watch. Yeah. When Lucy started listing off all those men, he was like, how many people has she slept with? That's a problem. Two. I was like, two. None of them were a possibility except for the first person that she said. And then someone she's not naming. And Lucy just made her sound like the biggest. And I never got the impression that she was on a date with Cyrus. I knew that it was because we kept saying that maybe she was his daughter, daughter. and it, they were meeting. And I know that she, he had that interest and she kind of manipulated to get the drugs. Yes. But I did it not wasn't think an actual. it was a 
date. It was like Nina and Elijah's date. He, mm, even more platonic-ish than that. I thought it was just more of a, okay, you have drugs. I want the drugs. So I'll go to dinner with you. Right. Okay. But, I mean, even if it was a date, it was one singular date. Right. They weren't dating. Right. Like, I'm not da- dating my financial planner when we go out to lunch and have a discussion about my Maybe retirement your plan. portfolio would look better if you started <laughs> I don't know, but you <laughs> know what I mean? You. Like yeah. it's women can have dinner with somebody or a meal or be alone. Although I do worry about that sometimes. I'll be honest. That's kind of like old fashioned of me. Cause sometimes I'll ask my husband how he feels about, cause I have a lot of guy friends mm-hmm. and I'm like, let me know if you think I'm hanging out too much. Like if you think that's just respect though, there was one guy that, and we worked together. So we did a lot of stuff together. And so people were wondering and I was like, nope. I was like, shutting that down. Yeah. Well, people who just met us would assume that we were together. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no. (laughs) We are just work buddies. Yes. But I mean, nice enough guy, but right. No, it's you're married. Yes. That's how it is. Yes. Very married. Very married. (laughs) Not just a little bit married. Very married. It'll be a decade on Friday. Wow. I know. That's That's not really very married, but it's crazy to me because I still feel like you guys just got married. I still feel like we just got married sometimes, but I also feel like I just met you. So, <laughs> and we can always go by Madeline's age. Yep. Of course that doesn't really help because I feel like Madeline's still a baby also. So yes. that is where all my justifications come together. I still feel like Sasha being pregnant is too soon though. I don't know. Even if she is pregnant in real life, you could have waited at least another week or so before right. you worked it into the storyline. Let's just Google if Sophia Matt. Google if you get a spoiler. I'm not listening to you complain. <laughs> and if I Google that, am I, I don't? Find I a don't spoiler? think so. But I'm just saying, you yell at me when I tell you. Oh yeah, I already knew something. So if you find something, it's not I'm not listening to it. It's not my fault. I didn't tell you to Google. All right, it just talks about the character. Sasha being pregnant. So I'm gonna guess that she's not then. I don't want to, I mean, people say that about Maxie, you know, and it's funny because Amanda Sutton, who plays Brooklyn, just came back from maternity leave and now and now she's pregnant. not really pregnant right? on the show, but Maxie is really pregnant on the show, but Kirsten Storms is not, but people still speculate all the time, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's just really good prosthetics. Yes. And they do definitely have a way of dressing them. It totally changes. The second that yep. they say someone is pregnant or want to insinuate that, they go from those tight-fitted dresses to total maternity wear. Yeah. I did like that she did go straight to Lucy, though, mm-hmm. with it. And I Lucy just was- wish that she knew Lucy a little bit better to know that that was not staying between them anytime soon. Not a good idea. And again, that didn't need to be talked about in the middle of the Metro court. No. They could have done that in the offices. And when it's office... <laughs> Why did I say that so weird? I don't know. And um, just spend the two of them. Yeah. Instead of all these people interrupting. And her dropping hints to Brando. Yeah. And who did she call again? And said, I have an idea for the face of deception from deception to conception or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't or know. the face of conception. They didn't tell you who they who okay. she called. I assumed that it was Maxie, but they didn't show Maxie yeah. over there other end but that's not cool that's literally i mean people can figure that one out Mm -hmm. and like we've talked about you know typically women do not tell people right until a certain she told her employer because it might have something to do with her work i feel like that depends on where you are in life her job depends on but i mean announcing Uh, okay if it's your first and you don't have any bad experiences to think about right true then I know with Matt, I, I mean, I didn't tell like my mom, but I told all my friends like that day. Yeah. So as you I get older, then you think of more of the bad things that what can could happen. happen. Yeah. So I can see that. Maybe okay. she just is, you know, but either way, it's her decision to, it is her decision. Absolutely. I thought it was cute that Lucy was so touched that she was the first person. Yeah. Though I liked that. Yes. Lucy is definitely a kid person. She's very cute with them. She is. Although trying to, here, when I was pregnant with Serena, this helped. And yes, I know that that stuff can help, like sniffing lemons and everything. Don't shove stuff in my face. But when when she shoved in her face first, garlic yeah. and something else. And I'm like, come on. Yeah, you would not do that. No. Respect the woman's face. Yes. We could just stick on pregnancy and Ned singing to Brooklyn's yes. baby. Yes. Yes. He made a whole tape for her swoon I like yes sweetest oh and now i think brooklyn i think that she finally thought about how other people are going to mm-hmm. be affected by not that she's 
necessarily, but she's used to her family being be- jerks. <laughs> yes. To put it mildly. I'm like being disconnected. There you go. You know, that's such a nice way to put it. <laughs> I don't think she was expecting them to be excited be, and yeah. really looking forward to it. Yeah. And Willow giving that compliment to Valentine. And mm-hmm. it was so nice that he overheard that. I liked Willow this week. She wasn't on very much, but everything that she was talking about made sense. She wasn't going off on other things. Like yes. Sometimes they have her ramble about things. Although I'm sorry, you cannot compare a mother giving a child a kiss good night to the same as a lover's kiss. No. That was disgusting. (laughs) Not at all the same. Please tell me (laughs) that you thought, like, why? Why? Yeah. No. (laughs) Please stop. Not not the same. Mm -mm. No. (laughs) Gross. She did a really good job booking it out of the mansion, though, and coming back real quick. Yeah, that was super fast. Yeah. I guess she needed to be discreet. Yeah. So that Peter wouldn't see her. True. I thought it was cute that Maxie asked, oh my God, I don't know Deanna. her name. Thank Di- you. Deanna. 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 Thank you. Yep. See, I knew I knew it somewhere in my head. If she could be her personal nurse. Yeah. She was already picking up the vibes that that new girl is nice. Chloe. Yep. That Chloe is nice, but not a hundred percent the fit. Yep. I'm not rolling my eyes at the fact that you were right, that Peter was paying her off. I'm rolling my eyes at the fact that there's sleeker headsets now. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, he had the old. He might, it was like straight out the eighties, like A <laughs> team style. <laughs> might as well just get him in the Zach Morris phone and <laughs> some big walkie talkies. You know, <laughs> like here's your beeper. I'll page you when I need you. Chloe, Chloe, <laughs> see this over and out. <laughs> I don't know, and not giving her credit that she would be able to handle questions that a pregnant woman would ask. Right. It, I'm assuming she's like actually That's a nurse. Exactly right? what I was going to say. You didn't hire someone that doesn't have all the qualifications to take care of her, right? Yeah. So she'll absolutely take care of her. She took her blood pressure. She's going to make sure that she's safe. Right. She was quick on her feet, though, with the how you were carrying, because that is something a guy probably would not think about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming not making like, but I don't know. I think all those things are wrong anyway. I don't know because mine weren't right. I can never, ever tell when I was pregnant with Matt, they couldn't tell me from the ultrasound. He kept moving. So they were like, we think that it's probably a boy, but we are not a hundred percent. And I had heard so many stories of them mixing it up that I was just like, I don't know. I am not going off anything. I don't know. And my grandma was like, you are definitely having a boy because you're, she did not use the word, butt, but essentially your butt is getting bigger. And I was like, Oh my gosh, grandma, <laughs> first thanks. of all, thanks for insulting me. And second of all, you can't use that word. Right. So but it was really funny. I carried all over with my son and only in my belly with my daughter. My grandfather correctly guessed all of his grandchildren and his great grandchildren that he was around for. Um, I knew with both of them. I just, he was a he, 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 and she was she, 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 she. Like it was just, I just knew. And if I did not want to know, he was not going to let me not know because he did like a somersault and was like, hi. (laughs) Considering how shy he is now. That's funny. I'm like, (laughs) <laughs> you weren't so much while you were in there, dude. You were like, nope, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> but yeah, there was, I don't know. Cause like you carry high if it's one, you carry low if it's another. I don't know. I'm sure it's true for, I mean, it has to be true to some point some for some them. people like that it became right this thing. But yeah, it's for me, it was never true. Mm-mm. I do think it's interesting that. So I did not like red sauce until I craved it with my son and I still don't use a lot of sauce. Like I'm not like a sauce sauce person. You were weird. Even on like pizza. I really didn't eat it until I was pregnant with him. He hates red sauce oh. and I craved it like crazy with him. With my daughter, I craved hot foods, like spicy. Uh-huh. And I never had really, but like I would eat buffalo wings and stuff, but like never craved it the way that I did. She hates hot stuff. That is so, funny. Mm-hmm. And now I love both. The hotter, the better. Ugh, no, no, thank you. Now off our pregnancies. Back to the show. <laughs> Didn't you say that you thought she was going to ask Bobby to help because she's already yes. out? Yep. I thought that was a good suggestion. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. It does. I thought it was hysterical watching Brooklyn research how to give birth and how oh. terrified she was of the if noises. If you are pregnant with your first child, just don't do it. Exactly. Google Everyone's is not your friend. is... I'm so thankful we didn't have that stuff. Mm -hmm. Every experience is different. It is. It is. 
I was scared when I was going to give birth to Matt because my sister had had my niece a couple years earlier and she's not usually a crybaby. And she was the biggest crybaby during her pregnancy. And whenever she was in labor, I wasn't in the room when she was giving birth, but I was in the waiting room and I could hear her screaming and she talked about how awful it was. And then I had all of my kids and was like, eh, this is nothing. It's fine. It's not a big deal. So when people tell those bad stories, it is not always true. Don't let that get in your head. Yeah. Of course it can, but mm. it's nice that Brooklyn's trying to be prepared if she has to help Maxie though, which yes. is very sweet. Yes. I think that this is going to be a big growth for Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. And that'll be a nice friendship. I think so too. It'll be really bad though when Lulu comes back because she's going to say what the heck. Yeah. Well, different things bond different people right. and they're in a situation that only they can understand. And I'm sure that Lulu will come around to it because all the stuff with Georgie and then they found their way back to each other. Right. Friendships right. developed from different things. It was just funny to think about assuming that she's going to come out of the coma before they switch back. I don't know how long they're going to run that story. If it's like Wiley the next five years, I swear. Right. So she'll be back. And how are you guys best friends? What is going on? I don't know. I was surprised that the nurse that Peter hired for Maxie was the same nurse that had Chase's meds. You didn't see that. Why are you looking at me blankly? I didn't see that. She had... I wasn't watching all the time. Well, that's good. I have to stop doing that. (laughs) That's good because I told you I was distracted this week because Megan was home. So hopefully we focused on different things. On different things. Yes. Um, She had a thing of the vials of the antidote and she put it into a safe. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I saw that. I saw that. You didn't realize it was the same nurse? I did. I think I just wasn't really paying too much attention to what the heck she was doing. (laughs) Okay. I thought he'd have different nurses. I felt like I spaced out a lot this week. That's okay. Like I'm watching it because it wasn't, I don't know. It it wasn't as entertaining. I get it. It wasn't as attention grabbing. Like I cannot be doing what I'm doing right now because I am missing stuff. It was just like, all right, cool. They had a lot of filler stuff. Like the conversation about Jocelyn in school. I feel like we've, it's a dead horse. We mm-hmm. beat it over and over and over again. But she hasn't made her decision and she needs to. She made her backup decision that she's going to PCU no matter what. Right. And as a parent, sometimes you just have to say, okay, fine. We'll put the deposit down on that. And if you change your mind, then we'll explore that other avenue. Right. It's not like she hasn't had a bunch of stuff going on in the meantime. Right. Yes. She's not just being lazy. She really is trying to deal with everything that's going on. Yep. So that conversation was pointless. I'm trying to think. There was something else. Oh, the conversations between Alexis and Sean. When they came on, I was like, yes. Yep. And then they started talking and I'm like, oh my gosh, stop. This conversation, I feel like but I we think could that do he's without. really driving home. I like what he's had to say though. He's like, I cannot show remorse for something I did not do. I 100% agree with that. I just feel like you already knew that. If you know Sean, which I guess everyone does I was going to say, I'm like, but he's a maybe, new character, maybe new that's... work character to people. Okay. And I will give them that. I didn't think about it from that perspective. Yeah. I thought you know, Sean's our old friend. Well, so and obviously everyone knows him. Nicholas bought the prison. Yes. To, and I thought it was really interesting how Alexis was like, no, mm-hmm. because and we are not going to do a deep dive on pr- privatized versus no, no. But there is a difference. I think that it's going to be really interesting to see how Nicholas could maybe shift Mm -hmm. that. But the look on his face when he's like, I am determined to find out who shot Hayden. Because Nicholas is the one who hired the person that shot Hayden. Yes. Nicholas is why Sean is in jail. Mm -hmm. Just Sean doesn't know it yet. Yeah, that will be really interesting when it all Mm -hmm. comes out. And Alexis, Hayden's coming back then? Mm -hmm. This would be a good time for her too because Mm -hmm. she can comfort Finn through all the chase stuff Yes, now that he's done with Anna. Yeah. That sounds totally awful because in one breath, I'm like, every woman doesn't need a man. But now we're talking about men. And I'm like, of course he needs a woman. I just like the relationship. I would like to see that I was heartbroken when they broke up. But I really like him with Anna. I like that they're, they, I like, I do like that they are building a friendship though. Slowly. I like them as and friends. cautiously. You I know, don't want them. But do you know what I mean? Like, I do. They're just, they're trying kinda... not to stay so close. Cause it's hard. You've been there. Yeah. 
where you're with someone for so long, you still rely on them for things. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to break that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like they're doing a good job. Okay, I do need to get that stuffed animal from your house. Okay, I do need to get this from you. But other stuff, I'm just not going to go to you. I think in a way that that's why they weren't working though. Because their relationship was so much friendship, the sparks weren't there. Yeah. It was like a practical relationship. Mm. And I don't feel like those really last. If it's the basis and you grow off that, sure. But I don't think that they did. It's an age thing too, though. It's fun. Well, this has to do with my reality check. But yesterday we had a marriage retreat at my church and they talked about sex. And he's like, when you're younger, it's a little bit more important than when you're older. He's like, it's definitely more about companionship. He's like, of course, it's always important, you know, but there's a shift. And like, there's also a shift in dynamic when you're going through different things in life where it might not be how it was. And I'm going to agree with that, except for, I think it's the natural progression of the relationship. And Anna and Finn, I don't feel like had that spark in the beginning. Oh, see, I did. I didn't. I feel, always, I mean, there I was moments him. that you definitely saw it and it was cute. Yeah. But it, it didn't have the same passion that I've seen her have with other people. Okay. Or yes. that he had with Hayden because. That not, she had with David? No. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I will give that. And him with Hayden, not, not like the sexy, sexy parts, but just the everyday flirtatiousness right. and cute comments back and forth. Yeah. It doesn't have to lead to sex, but I think that keeps that little spark alive and they didn't have that they're really good friends but they didn't have that flirtiness for a lot most of their relationship we're not asking for input on this one, just because we, <laughs> we're not sharing our personal lives about it no <laughs> just throwing that out there right. the one thing that we really don't need fan input on is your intimate life <laughs> that would be a different podcast we hope that you're happy exactly there we go <laughs> Oh my gosh. I don't know where to go from there. Um, oh, talking about friendship, Brett with Jason said she told him about her having parking or Huntington's. Huntington's. Sorry. Oh. I wrote down Huntington's. Don't know why I was trying to say Parkinson's. I was hoping that person was wrong on Instagram and that it was going to be the arthritis. She didn't have the test yet, though. She didn't have the test yet. Don't look so at it me. Could it's be a arthritis. Soap. I was going to say, don't give me that face. It's a soap. She didn't have the test yet. So it could be arthritis. Yeah, it could be anything. Who knows? And even Jason said that. Yeah. He was really nice. And they he held was. hands while they mm -hmm. shared the keys. Yeah. I don't know what their ship name's going to be, though. I don't know either. Brayson? I don't know. I am not good at helping you with this. We've already established Drake that. is weird. Yeah. So no. Brayson. It's going to have to be Brayson. Okay. Not Drake. That one. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, that's bad. Yeah. I know we talked about them with Sam, but her sharing that information, that was a good, they have a good friendship there that they're building off of. There's sparks. Yep. But friendship. And somebody shared, I think it was in our Facebook group. They, when she said like, she's turning into her father or something like that, they... <laughs> superimposed face on face over hers. Hold it. Let me find it. Oh my gosh. Cause it was actually really good. Like they kind of like smushed them together. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Our Facebook group is general hospital fans 411 in case you are wondering. And we just follow the same rules that we do on the podcast. No spoilers, no ship wars. Okay. It was not in this group that somebody did that. Oh, where did I see it? Okay, somebody shared it somewhere that I saw. It might have been on Instagram. I don't know, but it was funny. Okay. I don't have to look for it. I like that she was not... She's like, let's see. What are my options here? Either I go back and basically get killed, mm -hmm. or I run with you and die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so cute. Though. I like that he gave into her. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, I'm so not winning this fight. Right. Here's the keys, and you can come with me, and all will be fine. Yeah. I like them. I, I think it's going to be good. I do, too. I'm interested to see how it starts, though. I mean, we've got a little flirty right now. We we had the moment that they held hands for a second as they touched hands as they were exchanging the keys. But I think he's going to get some type of superficial wound and she's going to want to look at it and he's going to say no. And then they're going to be like fighting over her pulling up his shirt and then be that close and then end up kissing. Okay. Or vice versa. Maybe she gets hurt. But I think it's going to be something like not. that. No. Where whoever is hurt is going to be like, no, I'm fine. Stop. Just We have to go. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. And then, you know, you get in that person's face and then. Yep. They're so cute. I'm excited for that one. Not excited by Jax trying to make decisions for Jocelyn and where she's going to live. I know I'm all, all over the place with this. That's okay. I should have said it whenever we were talking about her college choices. First of all, she is an adult and he was just stressing that a couple weeks ago. So why is he forgetting it now? And Carly is protecting her. Him? 
telling Carly yes. that he does not want Joss to be at all like her was low. It was low, especially when then he turned around and said, do you remember whenever we were together, we had our perfect family. It could have stayed like no, that. No, you didn't. Exactly. You can't have both sides. If you want to reminisce about how good we were together, you can't turn around and tell me that you hope that our daughter's nothing like us because the things right. that you liked about me and thought we were the perfect family are now the things that you're saying aren't good enough. Right. No. Right. I was angry. And do you not remember all the shady stuff that you did in your business times? Not mm-hmm. saying it's the same as the mob, but there was times he's, that she wasn't safe because of his work. His is more corporate mafia instead of exactly good like, way to put it. Yeah. Gold star for you. I like Thank that. You. Corporate mafia. You know, they deal with the dollars instead of the, mm-hmm. we still don't know what Sunny imports and exports other than coffee. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Sunny is more, I don't want to say blue collar crime, but you know, like that's kind of more, mm-hmm. whereas his is making phone calls and getting other people where he finances the stuff. That they're shady not, stuff. He does a lot of shady stuff too. Yeah. There's definitely not been always times. legal, not always on the up and up. Exactly. There's definitely been times that she has been in jeopardy because of him. Yes. He seems to be forgetting that. Yep. I'll go all over the place too, where when Lucy was guessing dads and said, ooh, to Jax because Michael's former, because he's Michael's former stepfather. And like, maybe they can go talk some sense into the Dante (laughs) Sam thing. (laughs) Maybe Lucy can be like, I'm sorry. This, no. Can't do it. No. Mm -mm. I do think, I feel like we were right last week that they are dropping it though. I hope so. Because. I do not like it. It was just gross. No, but I liked Jordan this week, which is not normal for me. Mm -hmm. She was good when she was talking to Curtis and he gave her the divorce papers. Yep. I was sad when she took those rings off though, because man, her engagement ring. Um, (sighs) It's not just about the bling. (laughs) I know it's not, but that's a nice perk, especially when it's really pretty. I actually don't think I would wear one that big, but just to see her take it off, I was like, wow. Anyway, and then the conversation with Portia about everything and then the fact that they reiterated it when trina was talking to cam yes and she kind of said check your privilege because you're not seeing the whole picture and seeing the things that i have seen and felt that was wonderful and i thought that they did i thought cam did a really good good job too because he wasn't argumentative about it he honestly just said i i have didn't think of that no because we've never been in that position that we have to think that way Exactly. And I feel like Cam was saying what we said about it when we were talking about the Molly and TJ. Yeah. It's not that I'm unsympathetic to what you're saying. It's just never actually crossed my mind because right. sadly I haven't had to be in that position right. to have, not sadly, but you know what I mean? Like sadly, my brain just doesn't go somewhere that I've never been. You can't put yourself in that situation. Like I'm a super empath, but there's still things that I cannot, because we also don't think that way. Like I would, I don't understand. I don't understand how people can treat other people so awfully. Yeah. But I mean, so like I'm having a good conversation because I'm part of um, a couple DEI committees. And my big thing is disabilities. They are the biggest minority group and the most underrepresented. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about like intellectual and behavioral disabilities, even physical disabilities, the stuff that I've learned about. And we watched this Lenny Kravitz music video and it was a beautiful music video. It was all black and white. And he's singing about like love. I I forget the name of it, but he's singing about like loving everyone. And it just had, it was a very simple video where people, they alternated coming from the left and the right. And they showed all different types of people. And you could tell by the physical representation of them that like they they had different religious clothing that they were wearing. Um, I think there was something like 40 people, two were in wheelchairs, no blind, no deaf. Oh. It would have been beautiful to have seen someone signing yeah. the lyrics to that song. And how did they not think of that? Exactly. But that's my thing is that I understand that my challenges with my daughter being autistic are relatively, it's not a new thing. It's newly defined. Mm -hmm. And previously she would have just been institutionalized. Right. Whereas now inclusion is more prevalent by blindness and deafness. Literally go back to the Bible. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Even if you don't believe in Christianity or whatever, it's still in there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like the deaf and the blind and the mute. Right. You know, it's, and it's insane the things that I learned. Like I just learned recently that people with hearing impairments, how does the doctor tell you that he's coming into the room? Oh, I don't know. What happens right before the doctor comes in the room? They knock on the door. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean is I don't know how they. Exactly. 
Exactly. They need a light. Yep. They're starting to, but exactly. How is this still even a thing? Right. But it's another thing. If you don't have that disability, you have never thought of it. Right. Or something like that. I felt like such an idiot when I, but then I'm thinking, I'm like, no, I'm not an idiot because medical professionals have not thought of this in the doctor's office so that they have the dignity of privacy that the rest of us have. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. See, it just blew my mind because yep. that's what I'm saying. There's certain things you just don't think of because you haven't had to think right. of it. And you've never, I'm not saying that what they're talking about with race is not important at all, like at all. But I'm just saying like, I've been able to educate people on that side because people are like, have you really been discriminated against? I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. I'm like, yes, you've seen it firsthand. Yes. You know, it's yes. And it's, it's hard, but the way that Trina explained herself to Cam, I think was really good too, because she was obviously very passionate about it, but she wasn't attacking him. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. She was like, don't you know how lucky you are? Right. Because if it had been me, Mm -hmm. I'd have been killed. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that they had Jordan and Portia talking about Cameron. Yes. Because honestly, when I watched it, that did not cross my mind. Okay. I do have a question and this is pure ignorance and I don't know if you can answer it or whatever. When they said the thing about Elizabeth, they said, they, oh, I meant to write it down. They said something about, I couldn't figure out what they were alluding to with Elizabeth because she got upset about something. I don't oh, know. I'm messing I'm so this up sorry. so bad right now. I didn't hear. I know they, they were, that sentence. and uh, I, if you watched it and you know what I'm talking about and you know what they were trying to say or what they were saying, please tell us, tell me, email us, peer54podcast at gmail.com. Because was it something about her involvement? It was something about the way that she reacted or the way that she spoke to Portia or something like that. I can't remember though. I'll have to go back. It was, I mean, obviously that is involvement. So yes, yeah. like, but. I didn't know. No, I don't I, think I they didn't were, know if you were saying the fact that she had the privilege of coming there and being right there because he's an adult, so she should. Oh, perhaps, die. perhaps. And I feel like if it would have been someone of a different race, and the mom walked up, they would have right, said, they don't "Oh like, no, no they were an adult." Blah, blah. Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe that was it. Huh. Maybe that was it. I, I didn't hear the comment. I'm I don't sorry, know, and I, I, I didn't. Yeah, write it hearing down. Portia and Jordan talk about it, I was thinking thank you for for talking about it because i when i saw that scene it did not cross my mind at all they're 100 percent right it would not have gone down that same way so i really want them to be friends and i like the fact that portia went to curtis and said i respect her and Mm -hmm. the way that she handled that and i liked it Mm -hmm. i i liked it they did a good job Mm -hmm. i'm so happy when they do a really good job trying to help yep explain situations that we can't understand i'm i'm really looking forward to oh and what is black girl magic I did some Googling and I'm not sure. I think it just meant, and again, I could like be the totally empowerment? wrong. Exactly. Okay. I'd be totally wrong. So if I am, please correct me because I would like to know. But I think it just meant, I do feel like that in the African and American communities, that their girls are taught to be more independent and stronger than our girls. Okay. The, that their mom does a better job or do you think, of boosting them up. But do you think it's because they have to be more aware of things? Right. Oh, no. It's totally... I, I, I don't know how to look at it as a positive negative because it's coming... The reaction is coming from negative things. Yeah. But I do think... Do you know what I would have loved, though? I, I absolutely love the fact that... And I'm just thinking about this right now. I wish Elizabeth had been part of that conversation. Yes. Or at least maybe come into the gym and joined in the conversation because then she could have been like, what's black girl magic? And then they could have explained because I don't know... Right. Right. And I don't want to, I don't know. Google. It, no, I think it, I think it's like the empowerment movement. I think it of meant, we're not gonna. Right. Just don't let anyone hold us down. Okay. I kind of feel like the difference in the characters and again, totally take whatever is good out of this. Cause I don't want to be offensive either. The difference between Trina and Jocelyn where Trina is more outspoken and has a clearer sense of herself. Yes. As opposed to Jocelyn and, the, both of them have really strong moms in their own way. Yes. The way that Portia talks to Trina, though, is more, don't doubt yourself. You can do this. You got this. And not that Carly's not encouraging, but the tone is just a little bit different. And I feel like that's what it's Black Girl like Magic is. It's almost like she doesn't have to be as encouraging to Joss because... Exactly. Okay. Okay. That's how I view it. 
Okay. So, and, and again, again just, yes, again, the disclaimer of we do not know things that we have not if experienced. You've never seen a picture of us. Right. Amanda is <laughs> white as snow. <laughs> And I sometimes get a nice tan, sometimes, <laughs> but right. Nothing that like, we say is ever meant to be offensive. We love everyone. It doesn't matter what religion you are, what gender you are, what color you are, any of that. No, all that matters is how you treat people and what's on the inside a hundred percent. So that's where we're coming unless from. Unless you want Dante and Sam together, <laughs> then, then we might we tell might you that we're, you're wrong. You. I'm sorry. We won't but be mean. We'll just tell you that you're exactly. wrong like I do to you. No, you're exactly. just wrong. We're moving on. So <laughs> That we might judge you on. <laughs> but yeah. So, right. Please take all of our comments in that light. And if we say something offensive, please point it out in a kind manner because we don't want to be ignorant. Right. We just we, want to we know. We love being educated for real on yes. things that we don't know because we just don't know them. Right. And I mean, you have to learn stuff, you know, I yes. mean, there's a lot of, there's still a lot to learn. Never stop learning. There you go. Yes. All right. I don't know I mean, where I to go I from that. that. I'm like, we have anything else. And that was, I, I hope we did that justice real quick. I love that Ava and Trina's friendship is coming back. Yes. And, and the way that Ava found a way. Yes. Yep. Yes. I didn't know your daughter was such a romantic without laying all of Trina's secrets out. Yep. Like just try. I like them. I like her. And I liked her going to Carly mm -hmm. and being like, no, no, no. I'm totally on your side right now. Yeah. You let me know what you need. <gasps> Avery calls Diane on Diane. I know. I know. That was so cute. I so love that. I mean, cute. I love when friends get to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very cute. Yep, I loved it. I think that's all I have. I think it's all I have too. Oh, and then Chase just hallucinating again. And Anna had to call Peter for more antidote. Mm -hmm. Oh, but maybe some of that stuff from Trina is rubbing off on Joss because she did the true false with Carly. Yes. I really liked that. I, I did like that. She was kind of talking Carly back too. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of that is rubbing off. That would be good. Yeah. All right. Now I guess we can do to do reality check. I got my second shot. Good job. On Monday and did not schedule anything on Tuesday. And it was beautiful because all you had to do was tell people, I'm getting my second shot Monday. And they're like, okay, we'll talk to you Wednesday. Yes. You know, I mean, it was, I was exhausted. I am very thankful for the way that I responded to it. You have a boo on your socks from Aladdin. Oh, <laughs> that's a boo. <laughs> I guess I know. <laughs> I thought you said, uh, Boo. And but I'm like, is that what you call ghosts? They're not ghosts on my socks. What are you no. talking about? Yeah, yes. Boo. Yes. Okay. Boo Sorry, squirrel. I just looked down. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. I'm like, oh, it's a monkey. And it's, then I realized it's a boo. It's a boo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I felt good enough that I felt like I should have been doing stuff. And I felt bad enough that I felt guilty about not doing <sighs> You know what I mean? Yes. And I did wind up, I stayed in my bed all day, but it was nice because um, my son's last robotics competition in high school was on Tuesday and it was live streamed. So typically we only do three. We would have had prelims in March, regionals in April, and then nationals is May because they have to have time to fix the bots between matches. Mm -hmm. And the team that he was on actually won the day. Yay! And it was nice because I was able to watch it live streamed on YouTube and he would just text me, hey, we're going to be up in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like we're in the pit. They're checking the bot and everything. And it was just really nice because he knew that I was there because I would text him back like, oh my gosh, that was awesome. Because I mean, their bot was awesome. That's cool. And they won. Yay. So that was awesome. Yeah. It's nice to go out as a senior with the winning team. Yep. Heck yeah. And they are being recognized at the next school board meeting. Wow. Which is huge because... As I'm sure most people can attest, typically STEM and STEAM are still not taken that seriously as right. sports. Robotics is a sport. Those kids get hurt. <laughs> they cut their fingers, guys. <laughs> I mean, they might not be the ones beating each other up, but they, yeah, it's a sport. That's awesome. So yeah. What about you? Yay. Um, same kind of stuff. Kid stuff. Monday was the scholarship uh, yes. awards and it was really nice because Emily had told me she had got the scholarship and she talked about the special needs kids that she works with, but she didn't really tell me much more about it. And so when I got there, they started explaining the award and it wasn't just about working with the special needs kids. It was having your own issues that you had to overcome. So, oh. um, as I've said on here before, Emily struggles with bipolar disorder. And so she had to write an essay as part of it to get to win the scholarship. And so she wrote all about learning to self-advocate. And now 
that she has learned those skills, helping the kids that she helps in special ed learn that they can also self-advocate and that she can recognize when they're struggling with certain things to kind of go to them and help them with that, but then also help them learn how to ask for help the way that she has learned how to ask for help. That's beautiful. I was a super proud mom because that's huge from that's beautiful from where we started to where we are at now. There's been so much growth. It's amazing. So yeah. And it kind of reminded me to not focus on the bad things that we still struggle with and to be excited about enjoying all these senior moments. But you do have to give yourself some grace because some of them are really scary. (sighs) Some of them are scary. So, but I've kind of you know, got stuck in that place sometimes where I'm just like, just get to the end of the year, just have her graduate. I mean, we talked about this before. You're so excited for your son and having all the sad moments. And I think some of mine is because she's not my first, but the other side of that is that we've struggled so hard. It's like, I just want to finish. Let's just get to the finish line. Right. And so I'm not stopping and enjoying the moments. And that's not really fair to her because it's taking away from her moments. And it's not fair to me either because these are victories somewhat for me also. Mm -hmm. So taking the moment and enjoying it. But I was super well, it proud. Like you did that. I did. And I was, yeah, I was super proud. And then Thursday, I'm sorry, I'm going to make you mad because your son was not invited as he should have been, but it was the ROTC awards. And that was just kind of sweet because both Megan and Emily are in it. So to see them both in their uniforms and get pictures and stuff, um, wasn't quite as much of an accomplishment for Emily because she did not do like anything this year. <laughs> so she didn't earn like, anything. At least she got to be there. She did get to be there. And that was nice. Um, it was more about Megan seeing the growth that Megan's had over the mm-hmm. last year and then getting the cute pictures of the sisters together pretending. That's really sweet though. Pretending for five seconds and just that they recap like each that, other. My son is still in the junior ROTC. However, <laughs> the- I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, I felt honestly, so bad. I am so glad that you told me before I saw it on Facebook. Oh, okay. So thank you. I felt so bad. The class that my son had signed up for, they wound up not offering the whole year because not enough kids signed up for it. So instead of having him switch to another or whatever, there was no other option with the classes that his, I'm not happy with his guidance counselor this year. I am Mm -hmm. not that mom at all. I have never once, I have never once complained about his schedule, his, like, I've never reamed out a teacher or anything right? because usually it is honestly the kid's fault and they're making excuses and they're not doing what they're supposed to do and so it's not the teacher's fault and you can't blame them in this case the school was not helping right and she should have said hey we're not going to be offering this second semester do you still want to take and give him the option of right which second semester course does he want to take does Mm -hmm. he want to switch to a different junior rotc or does he want to stick in there and master sergeant did try to find a way to keep keep him involved, but it didn't work. But also his guidance counselor three weeks into this school year realized he hadn't taken an economics class that he was supposed to take. Mm-hmm. So thank you COVID for having now the 100% online option. So he's been taking an extra class all year Oh wow! online. So this is not yeah. our first go round with this. So that's why I was a little bit extra hot, but master sergeant did apologize. I just hope that he gets his awards. Yeah. You know, and I was like, he's, going to continue into ROTC in right. the in college. Mm-hmm. And that was our biggest thing because I'm like, when you do it in high school, you automatically write your ranks up. Right. And I was like, that better not be withheld from him mm-hmm. because of the schedule. I feel like right now is the day to ask for that letter that says he should move forward because mm-hmm. they're going to be at your mercy because that was ridiculous. Yeah. But I just felt bad that I told you in that way because I didn't. You didn't know. I didn't. I didn't. That's what I'm saying is I was pulling, I, so I dropped the girls off at school and as I was driving home because they needed to be there early to help set up and stuff, it just occurred to me like, oh, I can sit with Shannon tonight. And so then I text you to make fun of you because you cry at things where you're going to cry. And then whenever you had no idea, I was like, oh my gosh, I just I was like, Shannon. why am I crying? I just ruined Shannon's night and I didn't mean to. And I feel so bad. I told you, you did not ruin my night. You ruined Master Sergeant. So <laughs> I did not walk up. I wrote a really good email though. You did. You did. You were very assertive without being nasty. Good job. I wouldn't say assertive. I was very matter of fact. I was like, he has been doing this for three and a half years and you really forgot to invite him. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Right. He wrote him a letter of recommendation for college. Yeah. Come on. Okay. I agree. I promise a thousand percent. I am so not that mom that I just sounded like, (laughs) but you deserve to be in In 12 years. Yeah. In 12 years, this is the first time. Yep. So. So. That's, that was the reality. <laughs> I let Shannon know she should be mad without even realizing that she should be mad. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> but 
if this helped potentially another kid, because he could not have been the only one. Probably not. Because there were other kids in that survival class. Yeah. Unless they were not taking the other extra cur- 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 curriculars that prevented them from switching into another group or whatever in the second semester. Right. But I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. We only have two weeks left. Oh, no. What? We only have two weeks left. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, now she's going to start crying. You need to end this before you're crying. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I just did that to myself. Okay. Join us on Thursday as we talk about Maxi through the teenage years and early 20s, I think-ish. Guys, please give it a listen because of all this stuff that's been going on. We also did not get to watch a lot. Correct. So we're going to need some help. Yes. We've already gotten a couple emails. So thank you. Fill us in. We're going to wind up doing what we did with Leslie Weber and probably having a revisited episode filling in all these gaps oh, from that would be so much you fun guys. Though. I love hearing the stuff that, not even that we didn't know, but just from somebody else's perspective. Right. Exactly. So those are so, better episodes, actually. Yeah. So please write that in. Um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.